I'm Jeremy Greer. And I'm Gary Butterfield. And this is Days of Future Cast, and we are taking a small break from our ongoing coverage of Avengers vs. X-Men. There has been uh, new MCU stuff, and we're going to talk about it. Gary, how are you today? You know, I'm doing okay. I'm all right. Um, let's, can we rate the phases of the MCU at this point? Do you think it's too early to do that? Cause you know, somewhere like there's a listicle somewhere that's rating the MCU phases, like in 30 years, it's going to be like the top 10 MCU phases of all time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the phases ranked. Uh, it's pretty early for phase four, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh, you know, to, to rank it, but I've been pretty happy with phase four. You know, I, I've, I've liked everything that has come out just fine, you know, just fine to good, you know, to great. Uh, the the minimum, you know, we could we could rank the things of Phase Four, sure, like yeah. easily at this point, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. But I don't remember Phase Phase Two is tricky. Yeah, I don't you know, really. I, don't I just remember that, that everything yeah. has gotten better as time has gone on. So like, you know, four, yeah. three, two, one would be my you know best to worst ranking. Um, even though there's yeah. some good movies and all of that stuff. So I just I don't remember what the difference between Phase Two and Phase Three is at all. So <laughs> no, no, we're not that kind of uh, kind of nerd. No. Um. Yeah, we're uh, we're gonna do this week. Uh, we're gonna do a couple episodes. And we're gonna talk about Loki and the Black Widow. Yep, the most surprising team up <laughs> of all time. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go do spy stuff. Well, very well. I'd rather go do trickery. <laughs> See you later. And then they just go their separate ways for the whole movie. I didn't. Um, I, I didn't think about this, but uh, I'm playing that game Operation Tango with Patty right now. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's it's very much like. A, a Loki and Black Widow team up because there's one person who's doing literal computer magic, and then like there's the Black Widow equivalent who is like the infiltrator who is sneaking in and like running past laser beams and stuff. It's it's fucking it's great. So that is yeah, that's, yeah. that's that's the team up that we're talking about. Um, but yeah. yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna do two episodes: uh, one episode on Loki, one episode on Black Widow, and then we'll be back to your regularly scheduled programming. Uh, patrons, yeah. you'll, you'll, you'll have all of this stuff. <laughs> If it feels like we're killing the pace, uh, we haven't gotten out of that fight. Yeah, we're still um, in. The- <laughs> so, we're gonna- it's a week like. Uh, <laughs> so just know, buckle up for that one fight to last for quite a while. Yeah, there, there's, a, end end. there's a whole issue that we're going to be covering this session that page one just says, were you looking for plot? You're in the wrong place, Buster. Uh, yeah, this is go, fights. Go, <laughs> go fuck yourself. We're banging action figures together. So, uh, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to take like the world's slowest pace through AVX. I think it's, uh, it's going to be pretty oh, ridiculous. Wait. I think AVS is taking us to the world's slowest pace. Also true. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so remind me which one of these we're doing first. Let's do Loki. Yeah. 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 Let's talk about Loki. Six issue uh, miniseries, the third of the Disney Plus uh, TV shows, easily the best. I'm um, here, in my opinion. I, I think it. I think it's probably the best as well. Uh, it's not. There are things individually I like better about Wandavision. Mm-hmm. Agreed. You know, like the the promise of Wandavision, like the middle of Wandavision, the the fake Pietro stuff is cooler to me than anything in Loki. Um, I was so excited about that, but then that turned out to be a little bit of a swerve. Uh, so I would give this the top one, uh, uh, in terms of excitement though, I was extremely excited in that middle period. Just very glad we both agree that Falcon and the Winter Soldier is dead last, a distant third yeah, it's, in it's, some it's, of this. Yeah. <laughs> it, I liked it, yeah. but yeah, mm-hmm. you know, it's all right. It's okay. Uh, it's, it's, you know, and that's, that's the thing about, uh, the MCU that like, you know, the people who hate this shit will never really admit is that like, it's always fine. You know, like you can get real mad at it, but you're getting really mad at something that is fine. Yeah, you're getting mad you know, at the equivalent of uh, just like a normal sitcom. Like it's going to make some people yeah. laugh and some people not laugh. And some people are going to be super invested in the Big Bang Theory, Gary. And some people are, yeah. are going to hate its guts. And honestly, yeah. people they're should just... Co-workers. They're called co-workers. <laughs> they're, they're called anybody that works in an <laughs> office with you for some reason. Yeah, uh, yeah. You, you you can flash back to, to when your friend Haley told you that if she could watch only one show on a desert island for all time, she would choose The Big Bang Theory. And then looked at you as if daring you to, to say anything like you're in an Old West shootout. <laughs> you know, and the second you open your mouth, she was going to draw. Uh, uh, the, only, know, that's... the only valid response to that is Bazinga, and then just walk away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Bazinga, my girl. Bazinga, Bazinga on. <laughs> um, but uh, so Loki, uh, six six episodes. And this one is very different mm-hmm. uh, than the other two, I felt. Um, it's I liked this uh, as kind of a, a precursor to shit we're going to be getting into in the MCU of being a weird ass alternate dimension and time shit, which we knew was coming up. 
Uh, and something I didn't really think about um, until you're reflecting on this is that that is such a huge fucking part of Marvel. Yeah, absolutely. Like everything, like I was looking at comics uh, when I was doing the reading this week and er there's so many ages of, you know, where it's like age of apocalypse kind of started it, but everybody's gets an age. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the age, age of X-Man, age of Ultron, age of Khonshu, like all of these things have different alternate realities. Age of X uh, is another, like, you know, there's so many of these things doing this multiverse shit is in the blood of Marvel and bringing into the movies is incredibly exciting to me because you couldn't just start with that. Like, a, a you know, an evil Captain America doesn't make any sense without a lot of Captain America. Yeah. Without you know, a decade a plus of Captain America, you know, d yes. Being, being who he is and having that arc over, you know, a, a decade and, you know, doing the Avengers assemble like 23 movies in like taking the yes. time with all of that stuff, which is, I think what DC just will continually just fumbles every single time. It's like, oh, yeah, we just have to put everybody in the movie all at once. Like, no, you actually need to build out before you start getting weird. Yeah. Like, build it so out. You don't get, get a weird. piece of this pie. Yeah. Just yet. You know, and, and they, a lot of the stuff that they talk about in Loki felt like a little, you know, uh, a little advance for Gen Pop. You know, in terms, like, the guy who just goes and watches the, the Marvel movies and likes watching things being together. Uh, these are weird kind of heady sci-fi stuff that doesn't naturally mix with superheroes unless you have a really good idea of what, you know, what's going on with the, the base versions. Like, you know, the, you know, the basics. And I'm really curious how, uh, because I, I know people when, when Endgame was coming out, I know people that were, uh, as the lead up to that movie, people were asking stuff like, well, do I need to watch all 23 movies or do I need to watch all of this or do I need to watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or whatever? And and the answer was like really no like you could probably get through most of that watching like just the Avengers or like just the, the you know pick and choose which are the popular movies out of there and just be okay. Um, now I don't really know how they're going to go into something like Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and if you haven't seen Loki like how they're going to set that yep. up and have it be like have it be a cohesive film and and I think people would probably argue with me that. Marvel has not really done a good job with that up to now, but I kind of would argue against that. Like, I think feel like most of these movies hold on to their own while having those, that connective tissue. But now with all of this craziness and we're, we're kind of going into two weird branches with the dark Avengers, AKA the Thunderbolts versus all of this Kang multiverse time travel shit. And I, I don't know how any of this stuff is going to hold together. Like, I don't know what this looks like for an average person that goes and sees Avengers six. <laughs> like, what are they going to yeah, experience? Yeah. Well, or, uh, you know, who hasn't seen WandaVision? Exactly. Right? Like yeah. Wanda's just going to show up as, you know, uh, a dark sorceress out of nowhere. Like, it's really weird for them to, they're, they're increasingly putting themselves in situations where they have to reference these TV shows that, by definition, fewer people have seen mm -hmm. than have seen Endgame. You know, like one of the most popular movies of all time versus like a Disney Plus series. And like, this Loki shit's pretty important. Yeah. You know, this is what, you know, the, the finale of Loki unleashed the, the next, you know, what would make sense to be the next major antagonist of, uh, of, of the MCU, like a Kang or a Mortis figure, uh, or multiple Kangs and a Morti, um, paving the way for Iron Lad, uh, <laughs> you know, completing the, the Young Avengers, uh, group. And, uh, yeah, it just, and without knowing his whole deal. You know, without knowing about the TVA, like, is the TVA going to casually show up in the, the mainstream movies or is it just going to be for Loki season two? Yeah, dude. I, I mean, know, like, it's just weird. Who fucking knows at this point? Like, I, I, I really just don't have any idea of how they're going to, to, to hold this together. And I think we should probably, like, zoom in a little bit on Loki, specifically the TV show, because, like, the, oh, yeah. the lead up to this and the trailers and things, I got ridiculously excited because they were showing off such weird like like you mentioned like bonkers sci-fi stuff like the idea of l arresting loki for time crimes like number one i think i've said on this podcast before but like time crimes and time heist like i'm I'm all in for time shit like i will watch a bad time yeah. travel movie over a good anything else movie almost every single time like I, i'm sucker yeah, for this I, shit um yeah. so him like getting arrested for you know stealing the tesseract in the end game and like that them actually taking this small little like like blip in that movie and then making a whole series out of it i was ridiculously excited about but i thought that they would like roll that shit out over i knew it was six episodes but i thought like 
I really when I watched episode one, I was like, this is what I envisioned for the first three episodes. Like there was such a significant dump of like information and plot and what's happening in this universe that we've never heard of or seen before in the MCU. And it was just nuts. Like it was I, I was like I was floored with the pacing of it, first and foremost, of them just like walking him through the entrance to the time prison and then just like, you know, Luke Wilson just being like, Yeah, here we go. <laughs> let me let me run all yeah. this shit down for you. The little cartoon that played that talked about the <laughs> all of yeah, the, the, the Mr. The, DNA, the Yeah, uh, the Jurassic Park. Just, I mean, just the, the, the sheer speed with which that they rush through all of this stuff. And I wasn't like, I'm not, that sounds negative and it's not like, I absolutely loved it. I was like, fuck yeah, if this is episode one, like what the fuck are they going to do in the next five episodes? Yeah. 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 Th- this is by far the fastest paced of, uh, of anything they've done. And it's interesting that it's so quickly paced and still doesn't, you know, it still like ends up mostly being set up, you know, for things like this ends up mostly setting up this new status quo with the fact that there are alternate realities uh, out there and all the, the bad Kangs have been unleashed. Yeah. Um, you know, in the end, like that's really interesting. Um, yeah. So I'm with you. Plus one. Yeah. To that. Uh, do you have any, like what's a, what's some standout stuff from this that you, you really loved? Like the, uh, for me, you know, I, I loved the last episode. I loved uh, Kang. I love that performance, but, for me, the highlight of this was like 100% the uh, alternate Yo- Loki mm-hmm. universe. Uh, everything in that like Oblivion void yes, mm-hmm. was incredibly cool to me. Uh, and it made me want that to be like a zone people end up in <laughs> Yeah, uh, in, in movies. You want to see like multiple like, Spider-Man being sent here and at some point in the D- Doctor Strange 3, right? Like that's, that's what we're kind of aiming for, which is like a bunch of people sent to this void and trying to get out of it or through it or what have you. Um, I thought yeah. that, I thought that episode was outstanding, like through and through, like everything about that. Um, so that's the episode where Loki gets sent to, you know, he gets zapped or pruned as the, as the language. And, you know, we fought, we meet all of the other variants of Loki that are surviving and they're all crazy and different. The episode is filled with Easter eggs. Like we saw, you noticed uh, the yellow jackets helmet, um, doors, uh, or his, doors. Head. his helmet. I'm sorry. His head. Yeah. Uh, Thanos copter from the comic books. I think that was a hilarious yeah. pull. <laughs> yeah. The Thanos copter. Um, yeah. I, TikTok taught me the difference between Throg and Thor, the frog of thunder. I didn't know that for two separate people. <laughs> <laughs> so you can very briefly see, I think it's Thor, the frog of thunder right there, which is totally different from Throg is apparently. So thank you, TikTok yeah. nerds. Uh, yeah. But just full Throg of Marvel. Throg you wear on your grog. Yes, of course. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So if you've got to cover up your grog when you're in public, you wear a Throg. Yeah. Um, but that, I mean, uh, all yeah. of the, all of the variant Lokis, I think they did such a, a great job. Like, I mean, the standout is probably like the, uh, alligator Loki, but. Yeah, Gator Loki's great, but old Loki was awesome. Like, I love the way that these, uh, these Marvel shows have been fucking around with the old costumes. Yes. You know, similar to the Halloween episode of WandaVision. Like, I love the dorky sixties Avengers costume so much, uh, you know, and just like, yeah, that's what that would look like. Just a green yumper. You know, it, uh, it really makes yeah, me wonder dork. if this is all uh, if doing that specifically, like bringing back those those kind of co- classic comic book style uh, outfits, even though they look kind of dorky. Like, I wonder if this is all like a setup for, hey, we're going to bring in the Fantastic Four in the way that I keep saying, like Silver Age. And then use multiverse yeah. bullshit. So like we're gonna see like weird dorky X Men or Fantastic Four outfits from back then brought into you know what I'm saying? Like I wonder if they're all kind of setting yeah. us up to accept that a little bit. Be still my heart. Yeah, know? seriously. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like the, the you know because all you'd have to do now uh, the Loki miniseries did tons of work for how you would do that multiverse shit. Like oh those universes got pruned. You know like there was a universe with mutants. It got pruned. You know like it, it happened to have a bad Kang in it. Mm-hmm. so evil Kang got rid of that universe but now they're all collapsing into each other you know i mean beautiful like, it, like, the, the idea yeah. and we're, again like i think that's the reason that it's going to be hard to talk about something like loki and the reason that i keep thinking that when we watch future mcu stuff it's going to be hard to do it with, without the context of loki because like loki sets all of this shit in motion like yeah, yeah. wandavision yep. kind of punted this at the at the end like we thought that that's what where they were going with that and it really wasn't but this actually literally opens all of this stuff up like at the end of loki yep. like other timelines are available like they are not like they're all coming back and like we're already seeing evil kings like take over the tva like that, all of that shit is happening and it's nuts so to me like they could literally do anything <laughs> Imagine if they air these in a different order. So uh, Loki came first and then WandaVision had the Pietro 
reveal. Like you would 100% be like, oh shit, you know, the Fox X-Men movies are an alternate universe that got pruned. Yeah. You know, an alternate timeline. Like it would have been actionably irresponsible <laughs> for them to do that. There would, could have been a class action lawsuit amongst nerds. Uh, yeah. The uh, the but big yeah, thing like, I want to mention because just... uh, to talk about like something else that I really loved about the show is the soundtrack. Uh, I think that that theme, the Loki theme, is so fucking good throughout, and they they play with a lot of different like versions of it. And I just every time it went, dun, 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 I was like fucking yeah, yeah. hairs on the back of my neck stood up. I'm like I'm just gonna crank this the the stereo up louder so I can listen to that. Yeah, it's a, it's a super good theme. The music is is surprisingly super good. Um, the uh, performances on this were across the board super good yes uh who knew o- owen wilson would fit so well i knew this shit i confess to being uh i'm i'm I, I like owen wilson don't get me wrong i, I think he's a, he's a fine actor i've been tired of his like lazy mouth wow. stick in uh all of the wes anderson movies for a while wow. so yeah. seeing that he was in this with the weird mustache i was like man i hope they do something interesting with it and they did they he, he they made him a character instead of a fucking mm-hmm. parody and it worked like he he fit right in and it was he had some emotional moments and like i'd legit rooting for that guy to take over the tva somehow and like make this shit happen so yeah you know, it, it's a, he, I was, I was surprised at how good of a job that he did, like how mm-hmm. charismatic he was on screen, like just really fun to watch. Um, yeah. He also, I, I, I keep saying this to people. Nobody agrees with me. It looks like he has a prosthetic nose to me. It looks like a fake nose. He's got like a weird butt nose that he doesn't have in real life. Uh, really? Do you know, pro- yeah, it just doesn't seem like Owen Wilson's nose. Maybe it's gotten more distended and like, you know, drawn back over time like it's been a minute since i've checked in on owen wilson's nose uh but yeah boy. it's just kind of um, that's a website <laughs> it has yeah, been four owen days since you visited nose. owen wilson's nose, nose, dot com. nose cam. <laughs> uh, another thing that i really liked about loki and this is something they started early so it's not them setting up later stuff but it is and, and I'm putting an mcu filter over this right because there are braver things that do this you know this is the kind of shit that's missing that people who hate the mcu are mad about but I liked how meta it is early. Like, I genuinely thought it was good character beats when Owen Wilson was like, you know, you're not here to trick or conquer anything, Loki. Like, you're here to make other people better by defeating you. Yeah. You know, and that I thought that Tom Hiddleston did, like, a great job with that. Like, what a weird, you know, existential, like, a character being confronted with their narrative purpose, you know, uh, is is a real Grant Morrison like cool idea that's a little bit above the weight class of typical you know superhero movies i thought especially because it's not the loki that we know and love right like this is this is older loki like pulling him out of avengers one as opposed to pulling him out of say Th- ragnarok or um endgame where he dies yeah like, is such a weird move because when he starts out this series he's very much in the vein of like well i am a god of asgard kneel before me and then like his journey to the end of the of the series where he literally is sacrificing himself or trying to sacrifice himself to prevent you know this world from collapsing or going into chaos and he actually has genuine feelings about somebody outside of himself which i feel like has never happened outside of his family before uh is was was really touching like watching him go through that and i think there's no more of a great example than that and this is all props to tom hiddleston because he's just so fucking expressive in this um uh, mm-hmm. in episode five where we we meet all of the loki variants and they're all betraying each other at one time and like literally this huge fight scene breaks out and it's just a bunch of loki's fighting each other and he's standing there just rolling his eyes at how fucking childish and stupid yeah, yeah. it is and it's just like it was a moment where i was like i I'm so with you right now. <laughs> like this is yeah. great. Like it was such it was such a uh just such a great capture of of what a character is and how that character had changed. Yeah, really good, you know, pretty good character growth. And yes. this again, mm-hmm. you know, surprising to put this in the uh in in a Disney Plus show. Yeah. You know, because the implication I thought, you know, was that Loki is going to be a character, you know, in in the future movies if he's here at the TVA uh and the TVA still extant. You know, like the the timelines are not being pruned anymore because all these kings are about doing their stuff, but they're still trying. Like, he's in a position there of some kind. Like, he knows what's going on, so he's going to take some kind of leadership position in season two. That very well could leak out into stuff. Um, Something I was surprised about was that it didn't uh, bring young Loki 
uh, you know, clearly into the real world. Yeah, I was really surprised um, was by that surprised as well. Um, yeah, that young Loki just kind of disappeared since they've been playing all their you know young Avengers cards. Exactly. Yeah, like uh, we we get um, we mentioned having the whatever the young lad from uh, Patriot. Thank you, Patriot, and um, and then there obviously Wanda's two kids, and there, there's some other spots here and there where we we pick up some people. Uh, and I I really expected them young Hawkeye. Yeah, and I I really expected them to see to, or to see that dude like jump into a a time portal and like okay I'll be back next year <laughs> like I, is yeah, what I'll I expected. Be back that in a couple happen. movies. Yeah, like later I'll be an end credit scene in the end of Ant Man. Yeah, um, um, the, I think uh, the other the other big thing that I think really sells this is um, Sylvie, who uh, whose actress is I cannot remember. The, do you know the name of her her name? Of, of the, well, put me on the spot. Yeah, I, I, I know. I, 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 know I, I should act, know it, and I cannot remember her actress's yeah. name. Um, um, I'm yeah. so bad. We'll if find it's out not, right now. I'm fucking yeah. looking for it. Dude. I never. Uh, <laughs> Sofia Di Martino. Thank you. Okay uh sofia di martino who i did not know uh you know from from things you know uh i i'd never seen this actress before so, me either yeah i don't uh, I'm, I'm actually yeah. looking through her stuff right now to find out if i've seen anything by her that i just don't remember and no i don't i don't think i've seen anything by her yeah uh she does a great job as well uh of course like the performances across the board were really good um what were you going to say about her Oh, uh, just, just gonna say good. Yeah, uh, I w- good. Yes, g- across the board, good. But yeah. also, um, ended up, and this is maybe one of my negatives of the show. Um, ended up mm-hmm. kind of stealing the performance of Loki to a degree that the last episodes, especially, felt way more about her and finishing her journey, and than it did really anything about Loki, whose name is on the show. Um, and I, I, I don't really think that's a bad thing. And I don't, you know, but at the same time. I, and I, I really enjoyed like watching this chick do her thing, and I thought it like her actual story is really incredible. Like from start to finish, like being stolen as a child by the TVA, escaping the TVA, having this huge plan to take down the TVA, finally actually achieving that, and like getting to the end. And you know, even with this emotional connection that she's made with this this other Loki along the way, you know, still choosing the thing that she's been chasing after her life instead of uh, you know, I guess waiting for five minutes. I st- was never really sure what the alternative was <laughs> besides killing yeah. this dude but um but that it, it ended up being where that last episode felt more emotionally resonant with sylvie than it did with loki um and i, I don't again it's it's not necessarily a bad thing it's just like i'm kind of there for loki too you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. well it felt like they uh, that's part of i think of it feeling like it was setting up mm-hmm. you know for the future a little bit like the 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 i think this is probably the end of sylvie's story you know, like this is, this is Sylvie's arc. I could be wrong about that. Um, and we, but we're now, you know, so her story line got wrapped up. This was kind of her series. And then the next one is more about the fallout and will maybe be a little bit more low key focus. So I can tell that you missed um, the post credit scene where Julie Louise Dreyfus shows up at the void at the end of time and recruits Sylvie. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't that happen? Uh, <laughs> just like showing up like, yeah. oh, hello. <laughs> What are you doing here, purple hair girl? Most powerful character in the MCU. <laughs> like, it's Julia, uh, Julia. Uh, but yeah, I uh, uh, I would agree with that uh, in general. The other like uh, just minor nitpick I have, um, I think it was weird that they're setting up um, the the lady who ran the TVA, the judge. Yeah, Renway. Renway, I think. Ren- like yeah, that. Renway. Like mm-hmm. she's getting. She's gonna. She seemed really important in the last episode and goes and does a bunch of stuff that didn't really contribute. Um, I don't really know what's up with that. I don't really know why, like her motivations seem like she should be on people's sides. Yes. You know, Mm -hmm. Uh, but she's not for some reason. I never really, I don't think that they did a great job of explaining why she was a counter agent to a lot of what was going on. You know? Yeah. Like I, I don't, I don't think that's, I don't think she's a great character, honestly um throughout all of it she was like this devout believer in this you know kind of fake religion and and one of the things i really like about the show is it like is kind of an indictment about pure belief over anything right like this unquestioning belief in the system really resulted in the the death of millions which hey christianity (laughs) are you watching hey hey, every hey hey, every religion ever just about um renslayer by the way is her name just to get that right um 
Renslayer. <laughs> Renslayer. Um, but yeah, like at the same time, like she just seemed there to be uh, the opposite of Owen Wilson and to like, no, no, we have to do this. And then at the end, they kind of treated like, oh, we, 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 we have to continue doing this. We have to, we have to continue making this happen. So I'm going to leave the TVA. And then like, she just jumped through a door and disappeared. And that's one of those things of where like, I kind of feel like they're, they don't really know what to do with that character. And so they just like had her jump through a door and now she can just pop out at any point when a writer wants to pick her up. And I, it's, yeah. kind, it's kind of one of the things that when people complain about how MCU stuff is all interconnected, that's what irritates me sometimes is like, you know, we, you, you develop this character and it's barely a character. And then you had her jump through a time portal. So you could use her at a later date without really any regard for what we're doing in this show. Like I'm kind of watching this show right now. So. Yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't love her in this show, but I would have preferred her not to just be like this weird dangling question mark, Mm -hmm. like her going and and seeing her, her past, which is pruned from and going on this quest to get free will is the same thing that Sylvie was doing. Yes. You know, but she was fighting Sylvie at times and she barely interacts with Loki, who is the person who has gotten totally Kang pilled and uh, was against doing that. You know, it just, she was very weirdly removed. Uh, from everything like yeah i would have pruned that character uh, <laughs> if I, were editing. I feel like i i feel like you could have just uh you know not done that i don't know whether they fell in love with the performance or something or if they truly have uh have plans yeah but yeah really really uh probably the biggest n- misstep to me in the series was the handling like when, of, of her character in the last episode when owen wilson is like you know friends to the end al- allies throughout time and i'm like i i guess you guys have said that once but i haven't really felt that at all between the two of yeah. you like i don't know what any of this stuff what why you're talking about this um well that, that's part of the the, the b-side the pacing a little bit mm-hmm. you know is like it was really really fast paced which was good it meant that we didn't get a lot of time uh you know, for, for that development, like something that happens a lot with MCU stuff is that, uh, and even as a fan, like I'll admit this is that it can feel simultaneously like forever long, but still not having enough time to do everything. Yeah. You know, and we'll, we'll get to that when we talk about black widow, Boy, will after this. but black widow is a long, long ass movie, but still felt like certain things didn't get enough time, you know? Uh, and I kind of felt that a little bit with, with Loki as well. Yeah. Um, you know, but again, I also don't know if I, I might have just like cut some of that shit. You know, I think I think th- this was unusually focused. Well, actually, you know, I don't know. I think like Falcon and Winter Soldier is probably the most focused of of, of these. But this was this was fairly focused. Um, you know, if not the most focused, but still ended up I ended up wanting a little bit. It's interesting, so. like talking about Loki in the context of the other two shows, because I don't think any of these shows have done villains very well. And I think that's it's, it still remains to be kind of a big Marvel problem is, uh, you know, like if you think about Endgame, the big villain of Endgame is immediately killed in the first 10 minutes and like, you know, time jump a, a younger, more ruthless version in there so that we can kill him again. And the more interesting villain was the first one. Like he got what he wanted and then realized like, I guess it was worth it. So I'm just going to, you know, mm-hmm. make my alien, vibe. alien potato hash on this planet or whatever the fuck I was doing. <laughs> um, I'm going to retire to eat sorghum. And that's something uh, that like, yeah. I mean, when we start, we, we, we get evil vibes from the TVA, but I, I can't really consider the TVA here like the villain. Um, and they set up the, the timekeepers who don't actually exist. Like they're, you know, puppets. Um, and then we get to Kang at the end who they don't even name in the show. Like he's, he's, you know, he who remains yeah. or whatever, but like literally everybody, he, the, he literally the, says at some point, he's like another version of me might've done some conquering. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> like, and, and like, so in the end, like, I don't necessarily need the villain and it's, you know, the story, but it feels very much like a, Oh, the, you know, the real villain was the friends we made along the way. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, and I, and I loved King. Like, I love the fact that we get this kind of goofy representation, um, like this almost insane millennia old, super duper tired version of King before we get what is probably going to be like a bunch of different evil versions, like some good versions. Like it's going to be like kind of wacky, to, I, I think. And that's good. But at the end of the day, like I just like they just kept kind of kept running from stuff constantly. Like there was no clear antagonist throughout the whole thing, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. You know, it was it was like a, a kind of a, a lore dump, you know, kind of thing. Like teaching us a lot. It was very exposition heavy, 
and at times very action heavy, you know, uh, and the characterization was all on Loki's end. Yeah. You know, or, or implied elsewhere. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do do we have any, any wrap up thoughts? This is probably a good time to, to call it. We don't want to go like episode by episode or anything. No, no. Um, save that for our eventual <laughs> MCU podcast in phase 10. Um, yeah. Well, uh, no, I, <laughs> called, the, called the last the thing, phase I, 10 boys. the last thing I want to mention is, uh, just the visuals, like the, the stuff on that. I don't remember the name of the planet, but the planet that is about to explode because the comets are coming or whatever. Um, just like such hardcore lamentous. lamentous yeah, that's right. Uh, just such yeah, hardcore sad, sad sci-fi, town. sci-fi vibe. And I, I I loved it so much like that with the the soundtrack um, and, and it's throughout it like even when they go to like 2050 and they're in Alabama at a uh, rock smart or whatever like everything feels very sci-fi in a way that Marvel has really I feel like only done once like I feel like Mar- this, they, this was really like somebody finally looking at Thor Ragnarok and going like oh yeah we, sh- we should do more of this like it should be kind of yeah. weird and wacky <clears throat> some more of this wild and out design mm-hmm. yeah yeah I, I loved uh, Lamentus uh it, it it looked um and i say this in the best way possible like a bunch of video game settings yeah absolutely mm-hmm. you know um it's also uh man a big shout out to the idea of hiding in apocalypse oh, what a cool idea dude that's so awesome yeah it was great like i was just like i will uh our friend who is an mcu skeptic uh he was enjoying loki and i was talking to him i was like man i know that idea appeals to you like you're you're you know a big visual novel guy who loves time crimes and shit like isn't that a cool idea? And he's like, yeah, it is a really cool idea. And I was like, see, <laughs> had to see, give it up. Good. <laughs> yeah, you do have to hand it to him. Um, yeah, I love, I love that idea. Um, yeah. Cool, cool show. Good show. Uh, very fun, you know, appointment viewing yes. basically week after week. And, uh, I'll, I, I miss it. I'm looking forward to the second season. Me too. I'm glad it, so. like that was the the big, you know, teaser at the end was like, there wasn't a, a, a reveal of a villain or anything like, and, or, but there was like, Hey, there's going to be a season two, which mm-hmm. there's not going to be a season two of WandaVision or Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Like those are going direct to movies. So I'm really curious at what Loki season two is going to look like either yeah. pre or post all of this fucking wackiness we're about to get into. So what, what about the idea? I know, I know we're, we're moving on, mm-hmm. but uh, one of the things I was thinking about is uh, one of the things that the TV shows they're doing in the MCU is almost providing like a retirement ground for characters that have run their course in the movies. Okay. You know? So, like, Loki, obviously, like, in all the movies he's in, is great. You know, he's, like, the only cool part of Thor 2. Um, you know, really, really fun to watch. Absolutely, you know, defining performance. Um, you know, him being in just in his TV series, if that doesn't touch into the actual movies, like, it might just be good enough to be, like, here's a place where you get to watch Tom Hiddleston be Loki. Exactly. Do Loki <laughs> yeah. Shit. Like, we, we have to move on. There's Fantastic Fours and X-Men's about and Eternals about um you know we're going to move on but you know if you still want that classic stuff here we go and you know this dovetails into the next episode we're going to talk about the the black widow movie which is like a prequel movie you know that is a cool way to do that as well mm-hmm. you know like if uh hey you know we're not going to bring back actual captain america but you know what a what about a movie about um uh the the black captain america from Falcon, you know, like what, how, what is a way to get these characters in, yeah. you know, or like a period piece? I mean, not Sam Wilson, but, uh, yeah, Elijah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, like, and then that, like, what if it, the, he was fighting uh red guardian in the eighties? Exactly. And he, who he you know? thought was and actual you, captain America. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, yeah. Like you do, you do that movie and that's how you get these characters from the movies that are, are retired basically that you don't, they've run their course, but you put them in these TV shows. Like I would watch a, a six episode the adventures of like the black captain America in, you know, in do the right thing times. Oh yeah, absolutely, man. Like, uh, you know, like at, that'd be incredible opening this up to like leaving themselves the space to do this. And especially in a TV series means like, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to bank against it being a, a theatrical flop or anything. Like you can just toss it on Disney plus and like, Hey, people are going to watch it. They're going to talk about it. And you allow your characters to have these or allow your creators to tell these stories. And that's all for the good. And I know, Hey, Disney mm-hmm. monopoly bad. I know. I understand that. Like, but within the context don't, of don't this, don't tell us anything. Yeah. Uh, like, don't ask. <laughs> us about any of this shit like we understand uh like i i'm not like this is not a shilling for disney as a force for good yeah, exactly so. or anything like uh speaking of um, shilling, but I mean, like that's, <laughs> speaking of uh <laughs> patreon.com slash duck tv uh you got to get there because i just saw that they uh are making a galactus action figure that's three feet tall 
So if you uh, hit us up on Patreon, <laughs> just, if you want me to, uh, to buy something that ensures that no woman who I ever bring over to my apartment will, will ever talk to me because I'll have my large adult son, Galactus, the size of a real son. I'm just literally picturing a uh, pocket just attacking that thing constantly. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible, man. Think about the pictures. Like I'm, I'm actually legitimately tempted by this thing because you can sit it in a chair. <laughs> and like put like a bowl of cheerios and stuff in front of it like this would be great <laughs> you could it's put them funny. on your, like a little skeleton's back just have him hanging back there yeah there's all kinds of things you could do with this this guy um anywho uh if you want me to buy that uh you're gonna have to up that patreon yeah patreon.com slash duck feed tv um if you don't want him to do that then uh give us five star reviews on itunes and uh all kinds of various other podcast services tell your friends about the show that helps out a lot and uh mm-hmm. tune in and th- with the next episode when we're talking about black widow